This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to talk about the whole tornado cash disaster, what you should do if you've been involved, and what comes next. It's good to be back from vacation. It's interesting how all these very interesting stories always seem to happen when I decide to take a week off. But this story is about how the U.S. Treasury has sanctioned a mixer called Tornado Cash. This is primarily used for ETH and ERC20 tokens. We're going to talk a lot about that in this video, but I want to begin with the bigger context, which is that privacy is a fundamental human right. I believe this, and I believe that the natural desire for privacy should not be interpreted as you're having something illegal to hide. So for example, I didn't disclose where I went on vacation in the last week. And it's not because I was doing some illegal activity. It's just I value my personal privacy. Now, just as most people would rather not walk down the street without any, any clothes on, most people would prefer not to have to transact financially naked, metaphorically speaking, of course, or have personal details, digital or otherwise, revealed to the world without their permission. And I believe that privacy should always be the default. It's not the default in most developed countries today, but it really it really should be. And then this is the default, and then you have the right to selectively reveal financial or other personal details to the world. And you can reveal as much or as little as you want to. And I would say that the vast majority of people who've used Tornado Cash over the years are almost certainly law-abiding people. They're just normal people who wants some privacy. But what the US government did is it used the fact that some North Korean hackers, a hacking group, also used Tornado Cash. They used this as their pretext for imposing sanctions on Tornado Cash. And we're going to talk all about that in a minute. But I also wanted to observe before we got there that it's funny how these cases are chosen. It's funny how they never seem to find the time to go after high profile people who probably been engaged in child sex trafficking. And we don't have to talk about that too much here. So Tornado Cash was sanctioned by OFAC. OFAC stands for the Office of Foreign Assets Control. OFAC is a part of the U.S. Treasury, which as we all know is run by Janet Yellen, who is an, a corrupt, incompetent uh, former central banker. She used to be the head of the Federal Reserve, and she's gotten paid millions of dollars to give speeches to Wall Street. So this is an action of the U.S. Treasury through the OFAC branch. Tornado Cash, as I said, is it's an ETH mixer. It's a privacy tool for ETH and ERC-20 tokens. It's important to note that it is an open source software program and it is a non-custodial open source program. So when you put your coins in this mixer, you're not giving up uh, your private keys or control of it. So what happens or what used to happen because it's now illegal to use this mixer, you put in some ETH or some wrapped Bitcoin or some other ERC-20 token and you'll get out some different tokens, the same amount, but they'll be slightly different. And so this obscures the connection between any pre-mix financial activity that you may have conducted on chain and any post-mix financial activity. And the reason this news story is so significant is a lot of people don't realize that this is the first time this has ever happened. OFAC has sanctioned individuals. They've say, sanctioned groups of people, uh, like for example, possibly terrorists from Iran or from North Korea, etc. They've sanctioned whole countries many times before. But this is the first time that they've ever imposed sanctions on open source software code. And this was what makes it really unique. This will be fought in the courts in the U.S. for years to come, and OFAC will definitely uh, will definitely lose, though it will probably take years. And this is because code and open source code, software code, is a form of free speech, and as such, it's protected under the First Amendment. This is what all the case law and all the precedents tell us. Now, I'm certainly no fan of Ethereum or the Ethereum ecosystem, but this is an absolutely unacceptable overreach by the U.S. government. And this is going to hap happen more and more. And this is why it's very important that you understand how your token works. And whether you're holding Bitcoin or some other uh, cryptocurrency, you have to understand how this wor this works. And you have to be, p be prepared for nation state level attacks on your coin. Bitcoin is certainly prepared for nation state level attacks, while Ethereum is not. This is the case, it was Bernstein versus the Department of Justice. This is the case that established software code as free speech in the US. And Coin Center, Coin Center has already said that it may challenge this, these sanctions in court. This is probably something that will go 
uh, possibly all the way to the Supreme Court. So I'm sure we'll be talking about Tornado Cash for many months and years to come. I think it's interesting, especially for uh, us Bitcoiners, to see just another example of how so much of the Ethereum ecosystem is really just decentralization fiat, or it's decentralized in name only. So for example, we have the example of Circle, which is the company behind USDC, the US dollar stablecoin, probably the most popular one, is uh, Circle has frozen any uh, any um, USDC that is associated with Tornado Cash uh, smart contract addresses. So this is a this shows the power that these centralized uh, companies have in the Ethereum ecosystem, and the two big node runners for Ethereum's Alchemy and Infura, they have also blocked access to Tornado Cash, and this is really significant because unlike Bitcoin, no one runs their own ETH node in the Ethereum space, but instead they outsource it to companies like Infura and Alchemy. So when Infura and Alchemy decide that you can't get access to a particular service, most Ethereans are very pathetic and have to go along with this because they don't know how to run their own node. And it's actually very, very difficult under in the Ethereum uh, network to run your own node. There's another development that's happened that's also very interesting. And this is there's someone who is trolling A-list celebrities by sending them ETH that has been mixed in Tornado Cash. So it's currently illegal in the US. You risk actually something like 30 years in prison if you interact with any Tornado Cash ETH addresses. And yet here are all these A-list celebrities being sent free ETH in order to sort of taint their accounts uh, from Tornado Cash. And so there've been a number of names like Jimmy Fallon, the, uh, the talk show host and comedian, he received point, uh, point 0.1 ETH as well. And so we have this question, did Jimmy Fallon use Tornado Cash and then withdraw point 0.1 ETH to his account? Or was he just dusted by this troll, by this Tornado Cash troll? It's impossible, uh, I think it's impossible to tell. It, he was probably dusted, but if someone came to him, if, the, if OFAC came to him and tried to make him prove that he wasn't, it'd be very difficult on both sides. So this is a very difficult uh, type of sanction to uh, to actually enforce in addition to understand. So if Jimmy Fallon, who has now received this tainted ETH, spends any ETH now, there's a good chance that he's spending ETH from Tornado Cash. We don't. There's not the same sort of co coin control in Ethereum where you can pick which UTXOs to spend. And so if he spends any ETH from his very public account, he actually risks 30 years in jail because of these OFAC sanctions. Now, they're probably not gonna go after A-list celebrities, but if you have some tainted ETH, they might go after you. So this is the question I've been getting, even from Ethereans who watch my channel. What should I do if I own any Tornado Cash tainted ETH? In other words, I took some ETH and I, I mixed it through Tornado Cash, or I received it from someone who did. I would, I would return to first principles here, of course. Why are you even holding any ETH? ETH is uh, it's a surf coin. It's JP Morgan coin, as I like to say, and I'll link to this video below so you can see the connections there. But ETH really is money for slaves. And this transition that Ethereum is going through towards proof of stake is going to make it even worse. So once ETH is proof of stake, what can happen is the, bit, the large stakers, which are going to be mostly exchanges, and then of course, uh, Ethereum Ethereum insiders, but the large exchanges like Coinbase and FTX, they're going to be staking all this ETH, and they could definitely get together to conspire and decide not to include your transaction in the next block. This is one of the big problems, among many others, with proof of stake. So it's best not to hold any ETH. What comes next if you're holding a tainted ETH or if you've used it in the past? Well, first of all, it's important to say that if you use Tornado Cash now, and it is still running as a smart contract on the Ethereum uh, connected to the Ethereum blockchain. But if you use it now, obviously you are violating OFAC sanctions. You risk 30 years in jail. So definitely don't do anything like that. If you've used Tornado Cash in the past to mix your tokens and you, you now send those tainted tokens to an exchange uh, to sell or you, you put them in a place like BlockFi to earn interest on, they may indeed be confiscated and you could get in trouble. If you're just a little guy, it's a very low probability, but still theoretically pro uh, theoretically possible. But here's the really crazy thing. Even if you accidentally send or receive any ETH from any of these sanctioned ETH addresses, you st you're still risking 30 years in jail. 
any ETH, any token, any ERC-20 token that has touched Tornado Cash or associated ETH addresses in its history is now, you might say, tainted. And this is a huge problem for ETH users since it uses, since Ethereum uses the account model rather than a UTXO model like Bitcoin. Bitcoin comes in these little chunks. You might think of them as little bills in your wallet, and you can choose which ones to spend when you when you spend, and this is what we, we call coin control. You can't do this in ETH. ETH uses an account model, and it, as such, it's really not up to nation state level attack in the same way that Bitcoin is. If you own tainted ETH tokens, it might just be best to hodl them until this blows over. You might have to wait a while. You might have to wait five years or so for this to make its way to the Supreme Court. But again, if you're a hodler, I don't know why in the world you'd want to hodl ETH, but if you are a hodler, this should not be a problem. If you send or spend this ETH, there is a probability, albeit a, a low probability, that you get in some trouble. If you send them over to Coinbase, I wouldn't be surprised if Coinbase freezes those tokens. So this is a big miss mess for Ethereans. I've been getting a lot of emails about this, and there are a lot of misunderstandings in this space because it's a very complicated space. But I want to emphasize here that using a mixer or coin join in the case of Bitcoin does not erase your KYC for those coins. So for example, if you bought one Bitcoin on Coinbase and then mixed it or coin joined it, the IRS and the US government still know that you bought that one Bitcoin because Coinbase is required to report this to the IRS. And it could be, and it probably is your responsibility to prove that you no longer own it. Just saying you lost it in a boating accident is probably not going to cut it at this point. And if you ever move the Bitcoin from that address, the government will know that it was not lost in a boating accident and you still control the private keys. But if you tell the government that you no longer own uh, some Bitcoin or some Ethereum, this means that presumably means that you spent it or send it to someone or sold it for fiat, which probably means that you owe some capital gains taxes. So mixing does not absolve you of the responsibility to tell the to tell your to tell your government or regulator what happened to your coins. If you buy one Bitcoin on Coinbase or any other KYC exchange, this is basically every exchange in the US and in most developed countries, your personal details, your name, your address, driver's license number, date of birth, social security number, all these details will then be associated with your withdrawal address. But if you use a mixer or coin join, this can give you good forward privacy if done correctly. And make sure if you ever use one of these, definitely don't use Tornado Cash. I'm not advocating for anything like that. But if you if you do use one of these, make sure it's a non-custodial mixer and that you're not sending your, your Bitcoin or Ethereum to someone else who holds the private keys. But as I said, using a mixer or coin join can give you good forward privacy if done correctly. And there's a huge emphasis here, if done correctly, it will not erase past history and it will not erase the fact that you, you bought Bitcoin using uh, a regulated exchange. Now I do teach about the best ways to do coin, cho coin join in my paid courses. Of course, I'm just talking about Bitcoin there and nothing about Ethereum. I don't talk about these things in much de detail here for obvious reasons as we've seen today. I should mention though, coin join is not currently uh, is currently not illegal in the U.S. It certainly could be made illegal at some point. I think that would be very difficult to do, though, simply because CoinJoin is a collaborative Bitcoin transaction where you have all these inputs that come together and then you have equal equal output, outputs. It's very apparent on the chain, um, but it's completely different from a custodial mixer or even uh, something, a non-custodial mixer like Tornado Cash. And just like uh, Tornado Cash, you, you do not give up your control of Bitcoin when you do a coin join. I would say another solution is, is this. If you just buy non-KYC Bitcoin, in other words, anonymous Bitcoin, and there are various ways to talk about that that I discuss in my paid course, then you don't have to worry about using mixers or coin join going forward. And again, if you never touch Ethereum, you don't have to worry about Tornado Cash or other Ethereum mixers or the fact that you might be holding on to tainted ETH. So I'll put a link in the description notes below. And this is a link to my paid course where I teach you how to buy Bitcoin anonymously, also how to do uh, how to do coin joints. If you want to find this, it's just in the description notes directly below the video. They made it a little bit difficult to find, but you can you can see the link right here 
from my last video that I made, or you can also click more and then it will expand either below or up here. And you can just click and go to this course link. If you decide to uh, sign up for the paid courses, make sure you use the coupon code, which I'll include below. If you find this found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.